Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by Allstate Insurance, Jared Mayo of Martin, Tennessee. Thank you very much, Zach, and welcome everybody to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Zach, what's something you've discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? I discovered Chunky. And Chunky was a popular game invented by Native Americans around 1,000 years ago. One player would roll a stone across the ground. His competitor would throw a spear at it and try to either hit the stone as it rolled or try to make it stop. I thought it would be cool to discover something in the Native American gallery with that coming up. But, um, I didn't even know that was there. So I didn't see. either. I walked. I used to just think it was stones that we displayed, and I've, I've walked by and read it. It's, it's huh. amazing what you can discover. That is very interesting. Um, as he is our very special guest today, Bill Gray. He's an educator, a real estate guru, an auctioneer, um, and more. But he's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, a lot of topics, including um, Fulton and South Fulton and how those uh, twin cities work together. And then also, we're going to talk about the Banana Festival, the theme this year for the Banana Festival is a nod to the area's railroad heritage, which works out perfect because we're also going to take a little field trip uh, to the railroad museum that uh, you can find over there. So anyway, welcome, Bill. Great to have you here. Thank um, you for the invitation. Yeah, I mean, we're just going to talk about whatever comes up. Claire speaks very highly of you, by the way. She was one of my good history students. As, Great. Yeah, That's good. So back smart. me up a little bit. Where are you originally from? Uh, O'Bine County. Okay. Uh, I was born in Kentucky because we didn't have a hospital in South Fulton. I was born over at Fulton side, mm -hmm. but then I've lived in O'Bine County all my life. We yeah. have a, we have a family farm between Union City and Harris Station. Okay. And, uh, that's still, where you grew up. Well, I was very fortunate. Uh, my mother, of course, was a school teacher and her and daddy only had one vehicle and she was having to ride the bus to school and she got tired of riding the bus. She told daddy to go to South Florida, go to town, buy a house. Don't come back till he did. And he <laughs> bought a house that we still own. As a oh, wow. And, uh, but, uh, she, uh, she taught school at South Fulton for a long time, 47 years. And, now, I know you like history. Does your family go all the way back, back, back in this area? How uh, far back do you go? Yes, sir. The uh, the farm we have out at Harris Station, or between here and Harris, it is a century farm. And we have some land out there that was in our family before the Civil War. Wow. And uh, I'm very fortunate. Uh, like I said, I grew up on the farm, but I also grew up in town. Because we had a house in town, a house in the country, so I got the best of both worlds. Yeah, you did, didn't you? And you know where where, where Tyson is out there? Mm -hmm. Back in behind Tyson, uh, I guess that would be to the uh, south east. Uh, back in there, uh, some of our family lived there, and I have my. It was actually it was my daddy's mother's brother i got it right wow now. he lived to be 99 and a half and uh i never got to talk to him but i have a picture mm -hmm. of him holding me when i was a baby and, and what's so great about this i'll tell you you know we think about something being a long time ago they sent him across the field the first time the yankees approached union city because they thought a child would not be stopped by a forward patrol he saw him Wow. They, they didn't bother him he, yeah. to warn our family in town. And I've got a picture of him holding me as a baby. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. We think about that being so long ago. That's right. But, My wife and I were just talking about that this weekend, how how recently some of that history is, yes, especially sir. around here. Yes, sir. This area is just entrenched, in, it's entrenched. In, it's in history. Very rich. Very rich. So uh, did you get into ancestry early on, and or did, is this something that oh, came later? Yeah. I'm blessed in that I have, uh, I have a, a a picture of of that would be my great grandparents who got married during the Civil War and lived out in on the farm where we yeah. got, and she got married wearing a brooch. I have that brooch. That brooch was 
part of the things that was in a family trunk. Oh, wow. It stayed out in the smokehouse for years. Yeah. And uh, my daddy was one of 11 children. And once all of his brothers and sisters passed, I said, Daddy, can I move that trunk and lock it up somewhere now? And he yeah. said, yeah. Because his family would come home and look through it. And sure. there were letters from his brothers that oh. that, that fought in World War One. Yeah. Three of them went overseas. Oh, my goodness. Stuff from the World's Fair. I mean, just had fabulous stuff. Yeah. And uh, my grandmother's pen, three stars, you know, having three sons. And mm. that was, I've got that. And not a mouse or anybody ever got in that trunk yeah. for 50 years. Man, that's a blessing. And they broke in the house out there a couple of times, but they never, I guess they didn't want to go in that uh, old smokehouse with the snakes and the lizards and yeah. the spiders. Yeah, most of the time the good stuff's not in the smokehouse. That's right. So they probably didn't worry about it. Now, you, so you grew up, you eventually went to the University of Tennessee at Martin, correct? That, that is correct. And you majored in? Well, I majored in, uh, secondary education. Okay. And I, I taught school at South Fulton for 43 and a half years. I've heard a lot of your students talk about what a great teacher you are. Well, we, I appreciate it. They were very kind. I always had a pretty good rapport with them. We tried to have a little fun while we was learning and you know, that, that helps out. What did you like about teaching? Well, every day was different, you know, uh, and a lot of, I hear a lot of teachers say they didn't like their first year. I loved my first year teaching school mm. and they gave me my old homeroom teachers uh, schedule. So actually the first year I taught, I taught three classes and kept four study halls, but two of the study halls had 60 people in. Them. Wow. So I kept 60 people twice a day. Yeah. But uh, I had plenty of time though. Once I, you know, they knew I meant business and we wasn't going to have any disturbances. Then I could do my preparation for the three classes during those four study halls. So, yeah. For, for those who are listening, who don't know the difference between Fulton and South Fulton, it took me a long time to figure all that out. Give us a quick primer on South Fulton versus Fulton and what are the tri cities and, you know, well, as you probably already know, South Fulton used to be called Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've even got a deed somewhere or another where some of my family bought or sold a lot in, in Jacksonville. And, of course, the name South Fulton, I guess, developed from that it was a uh, a town south of Fulton. You know, it mm -hmm. just kind of made common sense. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that state line has caused us uh, to not be able to work together on some things more than than we should. And right. It's crazy how close the whole town is, but yet it's divided by Kentucky and Tennessee. That's right. So I wonder about that. Some of those people, you could be across the street from each other and be paying taxes different, following different yes. rules and guidelines. And it's really an, an interesting setup, but is it called the tri cities or the, or twin the, cities. the twin cities? Twin. Sorry. Yeah. So the twin cities, Don't are make it bigger than I know, right. I was trying to think of what the other city was. So you've got now I've also noticed um, a lot of development going on um, with all the things going on out there with the meadows and, and with Paige and her, yeah. uh, Joanne's yeah. out there. And then I thought Paige in school, you know, Oh, you did a good, you're a good student too. Well, so what, what do you suppose is the impetus to all this development change going on? Well, and, uh, there are some industry, you know, that has come in. In fact, that that's always been our shortcoming. There is a lack of jobs or good jobs, good paying jobs mm -hmm. for people you would think a lot of people would want to live in our area, uh, even here at Union City and at South Fulton, Fulton, whatever, because, you know, it's a slower life, rural setting, but yet you can be to Nashville, Memphis, St. Louis, Louisville in a heartbeat, you know. Mm -hmm. You can be to that limelight if that's what you want mm -hmm. every now and then. Yeah. But, uh, but I think, and thank goodness, there have been people like Paige and like Jeff Campbell and others who had uh, the time and the forethought and the money to to invest because uh, those two businesses there, uh, one on the Kentucky side, the Vettas and her business, Joanne's on the South Fulton side, it's just, you know, it, it's like it's like a dream to some of us that's lived there all of our lives, you know, when we just didn't have things that nice. Right, right. And uh, 
everything was fine, but it just it looks like sometimes we're in a different city now. Yeah. <laughs> town. Oh, yeah. It's a, incredible the things that are happening. Um, and I wonder. I, I want to also say about my my other former student, uh, Sam Hancock. Mm-hmm. and his partners and staff. Are yeah, they're good. doing some really cool Amazing stuff things. out there. We've never had them on the podcast. I need to get them get them on here. Oh, yeah. um, so I want to talk about the history of uh, uh, Fulton and Southwold, but I want to do that at the end. Uh, first, I'm also fascinated by when you retired from teaching, you went into, was it a, your family's business already, or did you start the business? No, I, I, I have always, I followed my mother and my father. I've always uh, got once I got out of college. I've always been in the auction real estate business and taught school. Oh, okay, too. excellent. Okay, so so the, you and I talked a little bit before we got the microphones running, um, and I told you that my wife won't let me buy a whole bunch of junk, but my daughter sneaks it to me every once <laughs> in a while. And so, so y- y- you and we just did this with my parents. Your company goes in if somebody needs it and takes a whole house full of stuff and then puts it for sale, you have estate sales and things like that. Um, what are you seeing different? You've been, how, how many years have you been doing this work? Uh, well, I, I've got a family business going on. My father started in 1950. Wow. And wow. Uh, then I've had my <clears throat> auction and real estate license since the late seventies, early eighties. And then of course I started teaching school in 77. So, yeah. So you're a good one to ask. What is the, when when you look at the things that people leave behind, are there trends that you see? Are you seeing more things, more of certain things uh, now that people don't family children don't want. And so you therefore sell it. Well, you know, used to antique furniture used to be such a hot commodity in Union city and South Fulton and Fulton. And now because of a lot of families, the younger people don't want it. it it's not, you know, it's still good. And I still like it. A lot of people like it, but it just doesn't bring what it's worth anymore. That, do you, do you uh, see a certain kind of furniture that is, that, uh, that is still, you know, are there things that people want that furniture in general is not doing, uh, not doing well. That's uh, interesting. Smaller th- and some glassware is not doing well. Of course, I tell everybody, which we don't always have these things, the things that are hot as a firecracker at auction or private sale or, or however you want to sell them in our area, number one is farmland. Okay. Number two is guns. Okay. And, and number three is gold and silver. Huh. And then tools and small collectibles like uh old metal toys and things like that and metal trucks we had an auction a couple of weeks ago and uh and had it in the woodland mill civic center mm-hmm. uh for mr and Ms. cloney taylor and he was a well-known clock collector and we sold a, a, about 40 something antique clocks wow and uh but the, some of the antique toys yeah. is what really really you know knock the top out of things that, uh, and other things that tobacco cutters and just, yeah. you know, he had a good variety of things. Or do you do, do you do more of the kind of estate sales where you come in or do you do more of the things where you hold up something and say, this is for sale, blah, 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 blah. We, we sold. Hold it up and <laughs> go on site. Most uh-huh. of the time, the A plan uh-huh. is to go on site. Okay. Uh, and we'll go in and t- I always tell the family if they hadn't already done something different, I say, leave the things in the cabinets, let us take it out because, uh, there may be five glasses in this side and one over here that I got to get it together where there's six that match and put it in a little box, <laughs> excuse me. But if they already have taken everything out and pile it in great big old boxes in the floor, I, then I got to take it all out again. Right. And, and the boxes are too heavy for you to even fool with, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so, um, do you find that when you go into a house and people say, okay, we're ready to sell it. Are there things that you see like a f- old photo album or something where you say, are you sure you don't want and st- yeah. And they say, no, I don't want it. Cause it drives me crazy when I go to a yard sale or an estate sale or even a antique store and see a photo album that someone carefully 
put all the photos in and then the family just didn't care about it. Right. And people that come, you know, I, I uh, have a coin shop mm -hmm. that I've had for years. Oh, okay. And kind of a. And where is that located? South Fulton. Okay. Kind of a mini historical museum. I, I have a lot of uh, uh, military relics. Pardon me. Yeah, no problem. That I, that I used to, uh, when we would study a certain era, I would carry it to school. You know, and I did it for 43 and a half years. And of course, a, a lot of teachers from other areas, they would say, they still let you bring weapons and swords. And that. I said, yes, they've never stopped me. Yeah. And, and the, of course, the students loved it. Sure. And uh, uh, it, it, I think it helped me and I know it helped me in my teaching to right. hold their interest, to get them excited. Oh, yeah. Interactive learning, yes. you know, is uh, proven to make a big difference. And I and I would carry some ID things, you know, uh, I've got things that uh, that belong to uh, to to Eisenhower, to Omar Bradley, to Nathan Bedford Forrest. I've got things that came out of that that was his that belonged to Buford Pusser. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, well, that of course I, in Tennessee history we'd always talk about him. Oh sure. When I was a kid, my grandmother, my father's mother, Elizabeth Castellaw, Williams, uh, when I would go there in the summers one time, she took me on a tour of shooting locations for Walking Tall. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how she knew them all, but we drove around in her car for hours and she would she would we would get out and she would tell me what scenes were yeah, that's very interesting were on there so yeah for for i know we're jumping all over the place but for the folks listening a lot of people have no idea who buford pusser was you want to hit on that just a little bit without a doubt the most famous sheriff in tennessee he's ever had and uh i uh my wife and i i got the word from a former student or a student at the time he said, uh, Mr. Great, do you know they're selling some things that belong to Buford Buster? It was a little bitty ad in the Union City paper. Wow. And I missed it. Well, when I read it, my wife, I took a day off from school. Yeah. And my wife and I went down there, and they sold stuff. They just would, like your desk or my desk, they 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 raked off stuff off dressers and stuff and and sold it in boxes. And, oh, my. And I tried to buy a lot of ID things that that I could tell, like I've got his clock that came out of his bedroom. Why they sold it, I don't know. Yeah, his grandmother's quilt, his wife, his wife's things, his daughter's bracelets. His his daughter even came and spoke to my students at school years later. Deanna, right? Was uh, that her? De Duana. Duana, that's right. Well, sadly, yeah. she's she's gone. She's passed away, but what a character she was. She yes. and I, she and I had attended some meetings and some okay. tourism related things together uh, several years ago. But she was quite a personality and and a big character, and you know, just really made that place. You know, the whole thought of made it into a tourist destination. Yeah. But uh, I even had students that after we did a little study on it, uh, they were interested enough that they had their parents go down to Adamsville and, yeah. and tour the, his home, which they turned into the museum. Yeah, yeah I haven't been there lately. I, have you been back in a while? I haven't been lately. I've got to go visit, see see what it's like. That day in 87, I even had one of, <laughs> both of them were laying there. I had one of the brand new T-tops that was, off his Corvette that was not in the car when he had his wreck. Wow. And and I asked him if those were for sale. And the curator of the museum, Ms. Lashew, she said, no, we can't sell those. But they ended up, and I don't know, this all happened over years. Uh, the car used to be at uh, Pigeon Forge. Mm -hmm. And and then they somehow sold or sent the T-tops to Pigeon Forge. But now the car and the T-top are back in the museum. That's what I understand. Huh. Yeah, I got to get back over there and see yeah, it. Me too. Um, it was such a part of Tennessee history. Oh, just just unreal. And you know, uh, I, I know a lot of people down there. Of course, they either love him or hate him. But uh, a good friend of mine and a well known attorney in this area who's retired now, Mr. Roger Fisher, mm -hmm. who worked for the FBI for many years. Yeah, he told me that a U.S. Marshall told him who knew what he was talking about. He said, Buford Pusser, did he use the most ethical means of law enforcement every time? 
probably not. Mm -hmm. But they said he was not on the tape. Mm -hmm. Roger Fisher told me, he said, this U.S. Marshal said they tried to buy him. Yeah. And he wasn't for sale. Yeah, it's surprising that there's not been a more recent movie or that they don't, you know, that he's been sort of somewhat forgotten, you know, nationally. Well, you know, the one with The Rock was mm -hmm. was a tribute to him. Mm -hmm. There were things that was different. Oh, I forgot about I forgot yeah. about that. That's right. That has come back, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah, I just missed it. Well, so let's talk a little bit about um, South Fulton and the whole Zach and I here. We talk sometimes about um, the whole train thing. and so. Uh, let, share with us for the folks who are listening who don't know what is the uh, importance or the connection between trains and South Fulton. Well, uh, the railroad has always been important there in our town. Uh, sadly, a lot of things years ago that went to Paducah was supposed to have been built there in our town, our twin mm. cities. Mm. Uh, I don't know who, I don't know why, but apparently some of the powers that be at that time, it just didn't, uh, uh, they didn't, I don't think they worked with the railroad like they should have. Mm. And I don't know if there was a jealousy of old money and new money. I don't know what it was all about because that, that was before I'd, I'd been a kid. You know, or, or, so I, I don't remember. But of course, the, the, uh, the ice plant there, and the railroads coming from uh, uh, from New Orleans headed to uh, Chicago and even Canada. That ice plant at Fulton was the only one between there. Mm. That's why the banana festival started, is because they re-iced the bananas down. Mm. And of course, you know we don't have the climate. <laughs> pardon me to grow bananas, but uh, we, uh, apparently we re-iced more bananas than, than any place in the United States. That's yeah, crazy. Isn't so it? that's why we became the banana capital of the world. When was the first banana festival? Do you know how long have they been doing it? Uh, well, something to show you. Okay. Oh, look at that. This is that's neat. The, and, and it's kind of misleading. <laughs> Miss Donna Exum came to the Banana Fest when she was Miss America 64. I, I believe it was 63 okay. the year when the first one was. So oh, I'll say okay. 62, but I'm pretty sure it was 63. Yeah, that's the year I was born. So I'm the living embodiment there you of go. the Banana Festival. But I've had that since that time, and I've always been proud of that. You know, it's a yeah. lover of history and memorabilia. Uh, and plus, the... Uh, Something here I brought. I thought this was interesting. This is a brass stencil, uh -huh. of course, of Fulton, Kentucky. Yeah. This was found uh, by some of my family in Latin America. Uh, they don't that was visiting Latin America, mm -hmm. and they went into a shop. My goodness! And purchased it. That shows you the importance of Fulton and South Fulton. In other words, they were stenciling crates of bananas knowing it was going through and that's exactly what they did is put that up yes, and, and paint it you know. i've never seen another one of yeah them. that's a great find and uh this uh belonged to to my aunt who was the aunt i told you that uh, was her husband that had jones auto parts and i actually was at the auction we, i worked it we sold this when she moved to california and I wanted to buy it then, but a cousin of mine was there and, and I didn't bid against him and he bought it. Yeah. And for years and years and years, I've asked him if I could buy it from him. And no, he didn't want to sell it, didn't want to sell it. Well, sadly, here recently, within a year, in fact, it was this year, his wife passed away and, and his two sons uh, had, had a, a sale, a tag sale of selling all their fabulous things. And they asked me, says, is there anything? Of course, I went to the deal and I bought several things. Yeah. But they very graciously gave this to me uh -oh. ahead of time. That's nice. And they said, is there anything you'd really like to have? And I said, I've always tried to buy that from your daddy. And he said, <laughs> they said, we think we can give that to you. Oh, that's so, nice. So yeah. It's a, it's a treasure. Yeah, that's a great thing to have. But, you know, just 
some of our family being down there. It's unreal. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy to think about, isn't it? Um, yeah. One more question about auctions, and then sure. we'll go back to Fulton. Um, I saw a beautiful farm that you were auctioning off. I think did, did a, it was a barn and a country house and some outbuildings. It was on your Facebook page. It was in Martin. It might have been an old one. It, it, it was, but yes, that was, was a, beautiful. Uh, that was a very unique place because it was still it was in the city limits of Martin, but it was still grandfathered to have animals. And it looked like a movie set for a movie about a farm. Yes. Did the people who buy it, did you know if that, did they have animals or did they just buy it because it was pretty? They bought it for investment. Uh, I have passed by that a time or two to see if they had done. It's, it's basically almost still like it was not quite, Yeah. but almost. And I don't really know what their plans are to develop it. It, I, I don't think they'll keep it as, that you know where somebody could have animals i think they'll sure there'll be houses and things built there oh, well it ago. sure was pretty it was uh it's it, beautiful yeah it was a great property so um going back to the history of fulton you can drive around there and see um really big old pretty houses that you know years and years ago must have been mansions. I, of course, I'm not from here, and so I don't. I, I can only imagine. Um, I'm guessing that when the train went to Paducah, the business went to Paducah. It started a bit of a downtrend when yes, it sir. comes to what was going on there. One of the more famous mansions, as you say, because it is a mansion that's there, is the one of the founding families of of Fulton is the Carr family. Okay, the Carr House. Okay, and. Uh, I had an auction several years ago. Uh, he was living. He has passed since then, uh, uh, attorney Joe Johnson. And his son owned that house, and he had gone to California. And I was having a sale of some excess things that that uh, Mr. Johnson wanted to sell downtown in his law office because he was moving his law office to his house. And uh, But he told me to go in the car house said, get anything, get anything that you think will sell, you know? Yeah. Said, get that and we'll sell it. So I did. One of the things that I got off, off of the mantle because he told me to, and it was his family. They owned it. Yeah. I think there's people that's upset with me because I took it out of that house and we sold it and I bought it <laughs> at the auction. Yeah. I started at a hundred dollars. I said, a hundred dollars, we'll give a hundred and a half, you know? nobody would say anything. And I told him who it was and where it came from. And it was Ann Carr. Uh -huh. Ann Carr uh, is one of the legends of the kind of the, the paranormal and the ghost things of, of Fulton. Okay. And uh, I bought it. I took it, took it to my shop. And uh, there's people that they had a, um, I want to say it was a wedding wrist. Not a wedding reception, but maybe a, uh, uh, what is it that's ahead of the wedding? Uh, uh, the rehearsal. Rehearsal. Yeah, the rehearsal. Yeah, rehearsal. yeah the rehearsal. Stuff dinner. like that. Yeah. They took a picture, and I wasn't there, but there's people that, that say this is absolutely true. And Carr, this picture was hanging above a mantle where I took it down, and they had a group out there, and whoever was taking the picture, it was a lady, she was taking a picture, and she said, well, there's Ann Carr. She's got to be into everything. And as soon as she said that, there's eyewitness that said this woman's earring, it didn't fall off. It shot across <laughs> the room. So there's a lot of people that believe in the Ann Carr experience. And uh, there's a well-known doctor in town that that uh, has got a lot of the history about Ankar. He's tried to purchase that from me. And I'm just hanging on to it because I, for the history of it, you know, I love history. Right. And uh, I will tell you this, I hung Ann up on the wall and uh, I've got her in a different place now there in, the, in, in my shop. One night, I guess she fell off the wall. She wanted to move. <laughs> Didn't work a thing. 
Wow. Not a glass front. Yeah. I mean, not a thing was damaged. Or, and yeah. I was, it was pretty high up. Yeah. So it, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to start going to your auction so I can get something like that. Well, I think I'll be, I would have bid on it. Well, sure. Um, and, and a lot of people think that the things I've got, I'd love for you to come to my, to my shop sometime yeah. and see some of the things that's in there. Yeah. Uh, I guarantee you, I, I, I'm pretty sure you'll see something you hadn't seen before. Now, do you work at all with the folks over at the Twin Cities Railroad Museum? Uh, I've, I've been in there. No, sir. Uh, uh, I don't know what they have room for of uh, things to go in or not things to go in. And of course, people that come in my place, they accuse me. They say, well, you buy this stuff at your auctions. I said, well, ever now and then. <laughs> I yeah. said, I said, well, you have a chance to buy it, they say. I said, yeah, I have a chance to buy it at the auction, just like y'all. I said, I may see it first. Yeah. Uh, I got to tell you one quick thing. Yeah, please do. I was getting a list, and the owner, we was out in a shed, and and I told him, I said, I'm going to list that. He said, well, that ain't going to bring anything. Look at it. It's covered in paint and everything. I said, yes, sir. He said, well, it ain't worth $5, $10. He would have sold it to me for $5, $10, but I said, no, sir. Let's put it in the auction. I said, I'm going to bid on it in the auction. I paid $135 for it in the auction. <laughs> it, was, uh, it did have paint on it, mm -hmm. but it was a railroad stool, yeah. you know, like they would put out for people to step on you sure. know, in the trains. It was not from here, yeah. but it was uh, from Texas. Right yeah. Well, I uh, would be, it would be dangerous for me to have your job because I would see all this stuff and I would just, I would have a whole museum full of stuff. I'm afraid my wife would not be happy with me. It can send your blood yeah. collecting well, things, you know. Yeah, well, if you ever have a yard sale, you'll have to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now, so your family, um, do they all see stuff that you have and they say, someday I want that to be mine? Is there, what's the, the main thing you've got in your collection that everybody wants? Oh, uh, I don't know if I can put it down to one thing or not, but something I'm trying. I have a son and a daughter. Mm -hmm. Both of them appreciate the Oh, things. that's good. Uh, my son is very knowledgeable about the things, and my daughter is somewhat, you know, but mm -hmm. they do both appreciate it. I have six grandchildren. Oh, my goodness. And I have already been very, very blessed and very fortunate that I have been able to. Uh, I started out, I wanted to purchase uh, six things of the same thing so I could give one to each grandchild. Mm -hmm. There's two things that I have done that with so far, and I'm hoping to do it with a third thing, but I don't have enough of the third thing yet. What I do have is I have six railroad bonds of the railroad company that after the Civil War mm -hmm. <clears throat> that General Forrest was president of. Yeah. And uh, I have six of those. Wow. With his signature on it twice. And I've got one of those for, for each grandchild. In mm -hmm. fact, the last one that I bought was last year at the Civil War show at Franklin because they're getting scarce, you know, to, to find. And my uh, oldest granddaughter saw one on a table. She was with my son. And anyway, I bought it and she has told me, I want that one because she helped find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The other six things that I've been blessed to find, and they're scarce as they can be, is postcards hmm. of, I don't know who's in the regalia, whether it's them or officers or whatever, but, but it shows people in regalia of the Night Riders of Real Foot Lake. Mm, oh wow! From, Boy, that's history. From, yes, sir. And I've I've got six of those postcards. Yeah, and they are they're scary as sins to teeth too. Yeah, I I actually just I just somebody just gave me this. My daughter actually bought this. There movie. you go. The Night Riders of Real Foot Lake on this old Shelby County magazine. There you I made copies of it and gave it to Jennifer to put in our archives. That's cool. So I thought that was cool. That's cool. Well, those postcards are, of course, that you know that was from the. 1908 you know rain sure and uh i've only ever seen six of them and i've been fortunate enough to buy them now you better hope that uh neither your son or your daughter has any more babies because then you'll you'll be that last little kid maybe he'll get the picture of the ghost lady that yeah, right. and car yeah, there's other things yeah and, and i've got a license plate that was 
Eisenhower's purchased during the war. Yeah. I've got Omar Bradley's some medals of his and his signature. Oh, I've got his five star banner. I'm sure he had others, yeah. you know, that would hang from a car, you know. Yeah. Uh, what's the thing? What's the thing that's history related that you sold that the people really bid on? What was the most popular thing that comes to mind when you're thinking about auctions and history? Well, I I sold a uh, round chopping block that came out of one of the old stores in Obine, Tennessee, hmm. one time, and and it was on a Saturday after there was a snowstorm Friday night. I mean, hmm. the ground was covered with snow, but we had a big crowd, mm -hmm. and it brought two thousand four hundred dollars at auction. There was several people that wanted it. And of course it got down to two that wanted it bad enough to keep bidding. Yeah. What I would not have done is the man that bought it, took the legs off of it and ro rolled it out across the snow. Oh of course, my. It's a heavy item, but yeah. I would not have done that. Not after spending that much money. No, on it. that was, uh, that was, uh, a good item, you know, very, very. And a lot of people knew the history of it always sitting there. In uh, I can't think of the name of it now, but yeah, the store, it, but it was it was in Oban, and the sale was in Oban. Yeah, so the, the things it seems like that people want the most are things that have personal attachment to them. Sure, you know, what okay. about books or books? Something that sell a lot around here because I love to buy old books. Well, uh, the most expensive book that I've ever sold, just one book at auction, back to the Night Riders. Mm -hmm. And I sold it at auction here in Union City. Uh, it was assigned by the author mm. of the Night Riders, the, the, the hardback, the original. Sure, that book is expensive anyway. I've yeah. tried to buy it on A books and on A. I mean, yeah, it was too expensive for my blood. But to get see an autographed one, that's really valuable. It brought $400 yeah. here at a sale here yeah. in Union City. Yeah, that's nice. And, uh, you know... Uh, it's not in our town, but are you are you familiar with? Uh, have you ever heard of the the Hunt Feeling House in sure, Memphis? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Would uh, I went in it before they fixed it, mm -hmm. and then of course I've I took my uh, my mother when she was still alive. We ate there on her 80th birthday when it was a restaurant, and I had purchased. I didn't get to go to the auction. They sold some things out of it. I did. I went to that auction. You were there. I you, went to that auction. You lucky and dog. I bought. Did you buy some books? That I, I didn't buy any books, but um, I bought a set from the 1800s, a set of children's blocks that you turn them different ways and they make different, oh. you know, and they were, you know, kind of faded a little bit. Chip, chipped here and there, you know, but we still, we actually have them sitting on our bookcase and they have the hunt feeling receipt thing tied onto them. Cool. So you can see, so they're sort of displayed. Or you, but, know, like, like, you know, I've got pictures of the family that I bought. Oh, wow. Um, but it's from somebody who went to the sale. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one of the pictures when I, when we went there to eat on my mother's 80th birthday, I carried a little uh, tin type picture encased and i sit it on the table and of course the waiter and the waitresses you know they kept you know they would look at that every time they'd come by and finally one of them asked me they said sir said who who, who is that i said you don't know who that is <laughs> no i said why well, i've brought him home for a while that's captain wister hunt who was killed during the civil war and uh and which was true you know yeah. So I, I've had a lot of fun with that, but I I, I treasure those things that came out of there. You yeah. know, nothing was taken by the North from there except right. except Grant. You know, he made them put all the books and everything back. Yeah. But then he took, you know what he took? Mm -mm, mm -mm. He took the barometer from the front porch. Oh, you're kidding. And after June of 1862, yeah. if you see a picture of Grant's tent, you can see hanging from the Center tent pole is that barometer from the hunt feeder. How about that? Now it it was open for tours for a while, and then it, it's been a restaurant. And a, it, is it what is it now? Do you know? No, sir. I I have been there before it was ever fixed. Yeah, it, you know it was just dilapidated. I don't know if you got to go in it. Yeah, then or you not. know I used to work for Elvis Presley Enterprises, and they cool. managed it for a little while, Wonderful. and they kind of helped getting it. So I was, but I came after that. But I was around a little bit of the aftermath of that. Okay. Well, then 
Uh, the last thing I was able to go inside for, and I don't even know if they, I guess they still do that. They use it as a venue place. And uh, uh, a cousin of mine in Memphis, uh, his uh, granddaughter got married there. Mm-hmm. So I got to go to, yeah. to that. And and I got to go in where the, the, the room that had all the library that had the, that's where they had a big table uh, with all the food that you could go in and get. But it was, that was fabulous, you know. Yeah, it was. It's a great space. Um, of course, Memphis has just so much history, and I love because that's where I'm from. Of course, oh, I, okay. I love. Great. I love Memphis history, um, and so just like you love, you know, South Fulton history. Is there a South Fulton Historic Society, or is there a group that? There's a genealogy. Genealogical Society, okay. but uh, not 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 really. You know, I uh, through my years of teaching, I tried to to do things with the students. I carried them, I carried them to uh, uh, the Capitol at Nashville. Mm-hmm. I carried them to the State Museum. Yeah, carried them to the military branch of the State M- Museum and the Hermitage for twenty five or thirty years. Yeah, and uh, we kind of, they kind of started frowning on, <clears throat> on us carrying them. So I did not carry stuff. And of course, the first 31 years I taught, I taught seventh and eighth grade. Mm-hmm. And I carried them as seventh graders because that's when we studied Tennessee that's history. That's right. Yeah. The last 13, 14 years I taught, whatever, uh, I taught all high school. Hmm. Well, and there's just something about going somewhere that I think triggers a better learning experience obviously than just sitting in and reading a book field trips are important for reasons like that i could see it in the students eyes oh yeah so many of them had never been to nashville yeah oh yeah it's you know what a lot of the young people who visit here have never seen an escalator so it's you know exposing young people to things like his historical sites like the hermitage or traveler's rest you know, even Craig Font, any of those places in Nashville that really trigger a love in history. Have you, do you know of any students who really embraced history and then went on and majored in history and became historians or? There are several of my students that have become history teachers. Yeah. And some of them, kind words, they said it was because of, of things that we did and yeah. The way I had my class, they said they wanted to do that. So. You inspired them to see beyond, uh, which is what wow. we do here at Discovery Park. There you go. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here today and talking to us all about the history of South Fulton and helping Zach and I learn more about uh, the subject that we talk about all the time. But now we know more more fact-based topics to talk about. Well, sadly, the person that knew this past, Mr. Follis Bennett, mm-hmm. uh, who was a, a druggist, in town for many, many years. <clears throat> His family lived in the house next to the car. Mm. But you talking about somebody that was knowledgeable of for many, many years, who, who lived here, who lived there, what they did, what they did for the town. He knew it front and back. Well, that's why it's so important. I think to get these stories down and to, you know, because you're right. None of us are here forever. And so we're all going to move on, and it's important to instill that passion in the next generation who comes after us. Sure. So thank can I, you. Can I tell you one more yes, thing? Yes, please. I want to show you one more thing. Please do. Yeah, I want to see it. As a child, as a child, you know, in grade school and even high school, you know, about the Banana Festival, well, well three things we always looked forward to, of course, was, was, uh, uh, Christmas vacation, and then used to at the end of school, when we were in grade school, we all walked every grade walked down to the to the theater that we still had in town at that mm-hmm. time, and we got to watch a free movie, <laughs> and so we looked forward to that. Yeah, and then we also looked forward to the banana festival because that just put I mean you know in the early years there was fifty thousand people in our wow. town watching the. Right. I've seen, yeah, I've seen pictures where, I mean, there were, you know, huge crowds oh, of people there. And, and, and they didn't just have a few vendors selling things. I mean, we had a full carnival, you know, I mean, it was just really, really three things. <clears throat> Something my family did when I was two years old and everybody says, oh, you don't remember that? And I said, yeah, I do. <laughs> we had Christmas morning, uh, in my aunt's house mm-hmm. there in South Fulton. 
And my mother and daddy said, Santa Claus left you something in the boiler room, which was part of the house, but it was on the back. Mm -hmm. And of course, I went running and opened the door. And when I opened the door, I'm sure my eyes got big. And all, all I remember saying is I said, surprise. This, this donkey was in my aunt and uncle's house oh my goodness. on Christmas yeah. morning, and uh, I named him Surprise. <laughs> so Santa Claus brought him to, to me in 1957. My father would ride him in every banana festival parade from 63, well, from the start, to 83. And did you guys live in the country? It, this was your country house where you lived, the, where the, 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 the mule, he, he didn't stay in your city, in your city abode. He did a few days when he would come to the banana. <laughs> he would ride in the truck with no sideboards. Yeah. He knew he wanted to come to the parade. <laughs> and my father would, would dress up like a, a Latin American person, uh -huh. in different costumes every year. And he rode him in the parade. <laughs> he became kind of famous. Uh, <laughs> uh, the 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 uh, the Ecuadorians and people from from Peru and whatever you know that would come. Yeah. He goes. They loved him. They this mule would eat banana pudding. Oh my gosh, that's great! And uh, he got killed. Sadly, he got out. I guess his hearing got bad. Mm -hmm. He got hit by a train mm. in eighty three. Yeah. So my dad rode him for twenty years in Banana Festival, and uh, it even made the Paducah paper. Bill Gray's mule. Uh, hit my train. He was stubborn. He thought he was gonna, he was gonna fight that train. I guess so. It was my, it was my donkey, but he loved my daddy. Yeah. yeah. How about that? What a story. <laughs> That's a great story. That's fantastic. Everybody tried to get daddy to get another one and ride. They loved it, but daddy said no. It just wouldn't be the same. Now the banana festival still goes on. They don't have a donkey that I know of. There's no mule, but they do still have a lot of events, and I know they have the. Uh, the uh, banana, the giant banana oh, pudding. Goodness, yes. And you know, one year we made a two ton. We're, <laughs> we're supposed to be in the in the book of records. Guinness Book of World we're Records. Yeah, I guess other people have made the one ton, but we made <laughs> the two ton. Who? Um, I would love to know how they go about making that much banana pudding. I mean, and who's in charge of that? Well, for many, I'll tell you who helped the banana festival keep going for many, many years. Mm -hmm. When we had stars, you know, and when it was thousands of people there at a big time, uh, she's passed now to uh, Joe Westphalen. Mm -hmm. She was uh, a newspaper uh, lady uh, in two different papers, one there in Fulton, one in Hickman. <clears throat> I had an auction over at the Hickman site, and uh, I sold something at that auction I didn't even know we had. I bought it. I've been on it. I paid $150 for it. Yeah. It was a... Uh, what am I trying to say? It was uh, an invitation to uh, uh, John F. Kennedy's inauguration. Oh, wow. And I know it had to be hers. It was found on a shelf that night that we had the mm -hmm. auction. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, it had to be hers because I also bought a picture that night of her and Bobby Kennedy. Mm. So she was big in the Democratic Party, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But uh, she did a lot. I mean, she worked at keeping the banana festival going for years. And, and, uh, of course the pure milk company there in town, you know, in making the banana pudding, they, and, uh, I remember one year, nobody got any until, uh, the governor of Tennessee, governor McQuarter, he tasted it first uh -huh. and he turned to the crowd and said, it's good. <laughs> and, and then everybody could line up and get it. Oh my goodness. And, and there used to be, uh, enough left over that all the students at school on Monday at South Fulton <laughs> and Fulton, we got banana pudding extra on our trays. I hope they kept it cold. They did <laughs> because it was, as far as I know, it never made anybody sick and it was, it was delicious. <laughs> oh yeah. But it is it good. Like it's gone. This yeah. Same time, so I wonder if there's a particular banana festival recipe that gets uh, used uh, that may make be. It, or if they use Paula Dean's, uh, Pudding recipe. I don't know. It's good. Yeah. I, I'm honest. I'm going to be honest. It's not as good as what my mama made, yeah. <laughs> but it's good. It's good. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. I, uh, you're very welcome. And I appreciate the invitation and visiting with you. And, and, uh, I, I invite you to come over 
both of you sometime and and I'll show you some of the things that I have in 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 my in my Yeah, book. I want to check it out. Somebody needs to do a like a a Fulton uh South Fulton history uh museum or is there a library over there? I'm yes, sir. Sure. It's on the Kentucky side. Yeah, so maybe the the library over there would do a, a museum display for everybody. Um, I think it's some it's a, it's a, it's an area with such a great history. So yes, thank you for sharing with us. You're more than welcome. Thank y'all. I'm honored by the invitation to be here. As an all-state rep in Martin, Jared Mayo's knowledge and understanding of the people in this community and surrounding areas help him provide customers with an outstanding level of service. He helps families like yours protect the things that are important, your family, your home, your car, and more. Jared Mayo serves O'Brien, Weekly, and Gibson Counties. Get your quote today at allstate.com slash Jared Mayo. Our guest today um, has been Bill Gray, and as you've heard, we've talked all about uh, Fulton and South Fulton and railroads and banana festival. And now we're going to take a little field trip. We're going to go visit, uh, the railroad museum. So I'm here with Darren Doss. We're going to learn all about what's here at the twin cities railroad museum. I've never been here before. Uh, you could start off by explaining the difference between Fulton and South Fulton. Cause a lot of people don't know that. Well, of course, Fulton, Kentucky is on the other side of the state line and South Fulton, Tennessee is in the Tennessee side and one street divides all of it. So you have neighbors, some who live in Kentucky and some who live in Tennessee right there mushed up next to each other. Exactly. Exactly. That's great. So on Real Foot Forward and at Discovery Park, we talk a lot about the impact of the railway system and the trains that came through here decades ago. Can you give us just a real quick history lesson? Well, Fulton itself... It was two, actually three lines that came through here back in the day. Now it's, we have three routes, four routes, including one short line. But back at, when Fulton first got started through railroads, uh, there was a line that was being built from Paducah down to Fulton and then eventually went to Memphis. And it got here in 1861. No, I'm sorry, 1860 and was extended down to Reeves in 1861 connected with the Mobile and Ohio Railroad, which runs through Union City, or ran through Union City. And then in, I think it's 1873, the line from Jackson, Tennessee, was extended up through Fulton to East Cairo and tied into the Illinois Central System then, in which those lines all in later years became part of the Illinois Central Railroad and was that up until 1972 when it became the Illinois Central Gulf and then in, back in 90 excuse me, 87, it reverted back to the Illinois Central, and then in 1999, it became Canadian National. So we talk a lot about bananas. Um, so what, what what is the relevance of trains, bananas, and, and South Fulton? Well, back in the day, there was a lot of import bananas to come in the Gulf, uh, New Orleans, Mobile, et cetera. But the Illinois Central was one of the principal hot shippers coming out of New Orleans, and those Cars in the back then had ice bunkers in each end of them, and that's before mechanical reefers or anything. But they had ice bunkers, and so these uh, bananas had to be iced in the summer and heated in the winter to keep the ambient temperature right for them. So at Fulton here, it, it was a uh, platform and a, a facility here to ice them, and they could spot forty cars on each side of this thing at any given time and ice them check them, make sure the temperature is right, and ship them on north. So that's kind of where the Banana Festival came from, from Fulton. And so as soon as I walk in this museum, there's a huge mural on the wall of a train and of the two tracks. Is this kind of what it looked like at that time? Uh, that's the that's the passenger station that was downtown. Uh, it was torn down in the late 70s, but uh, that was the depot here for years and years. I think it was built in 1900. And so when I walk in this huge uh, building here, can you explain to folks, like this is my first time to ever be here, can you explain to our listeners exactly where we are and what is the purpose of this museum? I have the date on here. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, and 
and while you're looking for that, when you walk in, I mean, it's it's evident that this is a, a museum. It's really well done. You guys have done a phenomenal job of putting this. And there's a lot in here, and I'm chomping at the bit to get in here. So uh, go ahead. Yeah, okay, tell us. Well, the Twin Cities Railroad Museum, it was initially started in, in uh, 94, 1994. Okay. And it came into existence in May 2008 here at the depot. Or not the depot here at the museum. This was Henry I. Siegel's plant years ago. It was a textile clothing factory. And once it closed, the city bought it and started using it for different departments and whatnot. And they was, uh, you know, they allowed the museum to have this section of it for museum and displays and whatnot. But, um, Mr. J.D. Cruz was the Instrumental one in this, he worked for the Illinois Central Railroad for years. Okay. And he, him and some of his buddies, Rupert Anley, they were behind this. And what you see now is what they did. A lot of hard work and time. <clears throat> a lot of artifacts here. I mean, you guys have got so much stuff in here in this building, but it's all very, very put together. We're not going to go over each and every one, but we're going to go over a lot. So if you're not interested in trains or railroad museums or South Fulton, you may want to move on and download a different podcast, but but we're going to do our best to share this so that everybody finds it as fascinating as we do. Um, up here, there's a big giant sign that looks like when the trains are coming in and when they're going. Is this from the uh, South Fulton station. This is a reproduction mm -hmm. of the schedule board that was here at Fulton. Um, and the original one is up at the Paducah Railroad Museum. Okay. Uh, they house it there. So they went up there, you know, make some copies of uh, pictures to make copies and whatnot. But what it would be every day that when the trains were running, the agent or operator would walk out and write down the times. So when people showed up to catch a train, they'd see if it was running on schedule or not. So th what is this here in the concrete? There's a big gigantic concrete rock with brass uh, uh, signs in it. This was done uh, when Illinois Central had their centennial, their 100 years, 1851 to 1951. They made these medallions and they had these uh, stones made up and they were placed at a lot of the depots around the system. Hmm. And this one here was from Fulton. For years, it was over by the uh, the ladies' club after okay. the depot was torn down, and yep. then after, and then when they started the museum, they brought it here. But those things were placed at depots all around the system. And then I so things like this. This is an old employee suggestion system where people could take a take a blank a piece of paper and drop it. This is probably this looks authentic. It's it is it's original. Yeah, and this a lot of things in here that like when buildings were torn down and retired, um, you know, this stuff be going to the dumpster. So luckily some people just collected it and picked it up along the way. Um, along here, I love these hats and all these uh, souvenirs and articles and things that are, uh, that are uh, these patches. Uh, there's everything you can imagine about the Fulton Railroad in here. Let's walk over here and look at these uh, photographs. This is my first time to be here. I've done no... Uh, preliminary visit these signs there's a lot of people out there that love and collect railroad signs you've got them packed in here don't you yeah these signs right here against the wall belong to a friend of mine bruce pierce he lives in nashville now but he he's a nashville chattanooga and st louis buff mm -hmm. and these old signs used to be along their right of way like this is the county line sign and this is a whistle sig signal okay these are mile post signs and then of course this is a this one right here is uh, pretty cool because they changed this. This was the whistle post that would be up like you're approaching a grade crossing. You would sound your whistle two longs and two shorts. And then in the oh. 20s, they changed it to two longs, a short, and a long, which yeah. is what we use now. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm an engineer. Yeah. On the CN River. Oh, the kind of engineer that drives uh, yeah, the, the train. train. Yeah, I run the train. But, uh, you know, this uh, kind of stuff hits home with me because, you know, I'm around it all the time. So um, every once in a while, when I see a train coming by, it's you up there in the. If, you, if you're going through Reeves or down through that way to Mill at Memphis, you could see us out there. Yeah, well, I'm going to come back and revisit that in a minute. I wanted to learn more about that. So this is also clearly a research library because I see lots and lots of materials that people could research. There he is. There's lots of stuff, uh, old railroad files and you know, stuff, and, and scrapbooks that people donate, and just different things. 
it's just a, a lot of cool stuff here. You just got to look through it and find it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the the uh, articles and clippings. I mean, here's uh, materials that are actually the original receipts and letters from 1949. Uh, just so memos by the general manager. Lots of black and white uh, photographs of the people that were the engineers and people that worked here. You know, I know there's a whole subculture of people that love trains. Yeah. And so th they would absolutely go. They would spend a month in here probably. Um, so you drive a train. How how long have you been doing that? I've been with the CN Railroad 22 years. And what first originally inspired you to want to get involved in driving trains? Well, when I was a kid, about 12, I got into the model trains and the hobby. And, of course, over the years was involved with it and museums and whatnot. And when I graduated high school, the railroads were kind of on the downturn as far as hiring and doing that, doing that kind of thing. So I went a different route, had a trade, and did a job for a number of years. And then finally got a chance to go to work for the railroad and did. Started in 2001 with the uh, Tennessee Railroad, which is a short line out of Jackson, Tennessee. And then in 2002, went to work for Canadian National. I've been with them since. You remember your very first time to be up in the actual, uh, in the train, at the, in the front, sitting yeah. up there? Of course, you know, back when you was a kid, we'd, they'd put us on, let us ride every now and then. It wasn't supposed to, but rules weren't as strict <laughs> as they are now. So, yeah, 12 years old, I was getting a ride over Union City on the switch engine. Wow. And like I said, then once I got to working on it. They had no idea what they were inspiring in you as a little kid when they were letting you do that. Yeah, so. they'd, they'd put us on this ride, you know. We were just, you know, it was just fun for us back then. Now, of course, the way rules are now, you know, nobody can get on there with us. Sure. Like that. We have a lot of people take pictures. But, you know. What was it like your very first time you actually drove the train alone, solo? Well, funny story about that. I worked for the, this West Tennessee Railroad, and their speed limit was 25. Which, you know, it's not very fast and, you know, it's kind of laid back. But when I went to work for CN and got turned loose over there, we was running 50 and 60 mile an hour. And it was a whole different world over there. And it was, it was a little daunting at first, but over the years, it's just gotten second nature. I, see, car. I mean, it's amazing. I always wonder what our engineer is seeing as they're up there driving and you're getting a, a great look at the countryside. I love to travel by train. But I've never been up front. So one thing neat about trains, you see the backside of everything else <laughs> for versus the highway. Yeah. So we see people's backyards and just whatnot. Too. I bet it's never boring. Well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so what about this little um, constructed Fulton Depot that somebody has obviously put a lot of time and effort into? Honestly, I do not know the back story on this thing, but it was here when i first started coming around the museum and it was hid back in the corner on this baggage wagon yeah and i thought it needs to be brought up front and displayed and you know it's it's pretty close right facsimile of it now this is something right here that you will probably find interesting this is a locomotive control stand oh there you go okay so this is this is what you is this what it still looks like pretty much today well no on the on the more modern engines it's all digital all the gauges and so this is like more or less give analog. This is from the seventies, the style here. And uh, our newer engines are got big computer screens. It's the same setup, you know, basically, but it's all computerized now. Now you guys have done such a good job of setting this up in, you've got the uh, newspaper articles uh, where people can flip through them over here. You've got the bench here that came from, uh, the railroad waiting room, and you've even got these little cars over here, uh, these little toy trains. Who who came up? Who who thought of all this and started putting all this together? Well, like I said, J.D. Cruz, and uh, on his as a railroader, his nickname was Rabbit Cruz. But uh -huh. Him and his friends, like I said, they started collecting stuff. People would donate and you know uh, lend stuff to them. So they just started having these little layouts built back here. Now, and, and different ones have donated them, but the plan is we've got a group of guys that are wanting to build a replica of Oban County's railroad system. Okay. Which would run from Reeves up to Union City, Reeves to Fulton, and Gibbs over to Union City. So we're probably going to be doing some revamping on this and building it 
to scale, hopefully, and have Fulton Yard and just lots of detail in it. Because what I'm looking at now is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, probably 15 miniature train tracks and setups. Uh, so in this space, you're going to try to rebuild the whole Obine County yes. area? Yeah, that's that's the goal. Uh, like I said, we're changing the guard here at the museum more or less. And mid-August here, we've got a meeting with the modelers. I think it's about 10 or 15 of them. And see what they want to do. And okay. He's on board with it. You know, the city of South Fulton and the Chamber of Commerce. So they like to build it because it might draw people. <laughs> I mean, I think it would. I could totally see this as an attraction that people would want to check out um, and visit when they come here uh, to Union City or to Obion County. Yes, <laughs> um, it's uh, it's it's a lot to do and to see. Do you ever get all these things going all at one time? Well, I don't. I'm I'm not really into the modeling, but we do have some guys that have in the past. You know, when we have kid groups, uh -huh. school groups, or whatever. Right. And, uh, they have birthday parties here as well. Okay, let's Thanks, too. I wanted to call your attention. Yeah, this, please do. This bench come out of the Martin, Tennessee Depot. Okay. Which is kind of neat. And then that table and one of those chairs come from Hickman, Kentucky. Yeah, I love uh, vintage nice. office furniture and, and things like this bench uh, that show what, what was going on. Back in the day, and the tools people used over here, you've got uh, the old-timey lamps and telephones and desk and uh, just really neat stuff here. This is, I don't know if you're familiar with this, is telegraph equipment. Oh, yeah, okay. Before the phones started playing. Yep. And you had a sounder and a sender at every office. Of here. Should work. Oh, there we go. It's working. Very cool. So you had an operator at every station, and that's how they communicated. With yeah. The railroad and whatnot just all telegraph we got lots of timetables and files and books and magazines and stuff from the railroad we put on display here and pictures of course there's there's a nice shot of the depot back right before it was torn down what is your favorite artifact in this whole building well i'm kind of biased because my friend and i we've got some of our railroad motor cars back here in the back okay those those are Probably our favorites because they're ours. Okay. A lot of the pictures, a lot of the old pictures here at Fulton Yard back in the day, like that night there, particular, yeah, all that's gone. It's just neat to look back and see what it was. Well, it's important to hang on to this history, and what a great way to do that. I love this picture over here of um, all of these, uh, the locomotive class of Paducah, Kentucky, 1940. Man, those guys look like they're ready to go to work, don't they? You know, and when they, um, they're engineers, they've been firing for years. They had to be firemen before they could be an engineer. Oh, really? Yes. Huh. So they, you, you just couldn't go right in to run an engine. You had to fire for years, you know, steam engines, and then get promoted. Yeah, it's really... Um, it's really remarkable what all you guys have gathered here just the sheer volume of photographs and information and research um, and just also the size. Because of the size of this room, you're able to put big things in here that a lot of times people not might not be able to. Working for the railroad, I've been trying to tap a few sources and get some more um, prototype stuff donated. That way when people come in here, it would be like a, a hands-on visual, you know, like track and uh, components and different things where people could actually see it. This is what I was telling you about, these motor cars back here. Okay. Those are what the track guys used to ride to repair the rail back in Okay. The, now they use high rail trucks. But this one's a 1942 model car. This one's a 52. That's about a 67. And this one is a 1935. Wow, that's amazing. They're all built by the Fairmont Railway Motors of Fairmont, Minnesota. If you put this on the track now, would it go? Would it would it roll down the track? That one needs to be worked on, but these two would they would they absolutely were, just they, roll they down. Up restorations. This would be a fun way to tour the countryside yeah, right yeah, here. And uh, my friend Bruce and I, we've been on a few excursions with them until a train comes along, and then uh, shut the railroad down. Tourist <laughs> railroad, the short lines that let us do it. But uh, we hadn't rode them in a number of years. Well, and you've got room to expand back we here. Do. We do, and. Uh, you know, just as time, I kind of consolidated everything 
because it was spread out. Sure, I and mean, people are just really getting a good look at it. But it's a uh, it's 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 got a lot of potential here. Now, if somebody wants to pay this place a visit, what when are you are you open all the time? No, just on weekends. On the weekends, okay. Yeah, what are the hours? Really, no set hours. Saturday morning. Uh, most of the time, there's a man that comes over here some, and if I'm home, I can come in and show people around. best way to do is just contact me on Facebook okay. or on my cell phone. Okay. Is there anything online that people can check out? There's a there's a outdated Facebook page. Okay. So they can see a little bit on Facebook, but it'll yeah. be outdated. So uh, uh, tell them your, what is your handle on Facebook? <laughs> Oh, uh, it's just Darren Doss. Darren Doss. So if they search Darren Doss, you'll probably be uh, one of the first ones that comes up. So uh, absolutely, I highly recommend for a unique, one-of-a-kind experience, people should definitely come and check this out. Uh, thank you so much. This was so You're interesting. Welcome. Welcome. I really appreciate you taking the time to show me around and uh, letting me check this out. Kudos on a fantastic job you're doing here. So now Darren's taking me in here to the office of the new head of the Chamber of Con, Con the Chamber of Commerce. I can't even say it. Um, I'm in here with Katrina Cobb. Um, thank you for taking a minute to talk to me. No problem. You're very welcome. Now, where where is your family? Your Cobb is that a married name or is that your? That is a married name. Okay. I've been married to my husband now almost forty years. And we live outside of Martin. Where does he, where does he, hey, I've got a lot of cobs in my family. So oh, really? Is he a Haywood County cob? No. Okay. No, he's a Northwest Tennessee cob. Okay, I got you. Well, maybe somewhere along the way. He, I'm sure he was somewhere a down there, there's a, right, exactly. The so paths you, have crossed. This is a new gig for you. Is that correct? It is. I've been here a little under two months now. Oh, my goodness. And so where, what were you doing before this? Before this, I've worked for public television in West Tennessee for almost 40 years. Oh, my goodness. Um, so this is a little bit of a, of a change. It is, and yet it's a lot of the same. Um, I did a lot of special events there. You know, of course, we were a membership organization also. So there's a lot of things that transition from one job to the other. That's excellent. I'm, I, as, as I was uh, talking about a while ago with Darren, I'm from out of town. And so I've always been fascinated by Fulton and South Fulton and the trains. Of course, we have the trains at Discovery Park. And um, he was just showing me all the things you guys have in that museum. I just see so much opportunity. So first of all, not even opportunity. The things they've already done are just tremendous. And then I see a lot of opportunity. And then with the Banana Festival, um, I've always been fascinated with a Banana Festival here in West Tennessee. Some listeners might not know. What all happens at, have you, when you lived here, did you go to the Banana Festival as a consumer, just as a regular person? Well, again, I'm from Martin. And yeah. so um, I have come over for a few of the events at the Banana Festival in the past. But this year, I hope to be more involved. You know, it's a big deal in this community. You all need to come down and visit uh, South Fulton and Fulton and participate. It'll be a fun time. And I do know there's a giant uh, banana, banana pudding. pudding. Uh, you know, I moved here from Washington, D.C., and I love my friends in Washington, D.C. But do um, they know how to make good banana pudding? Well, see, that's the problem is they their thing, their hook are the cherry trees. And so every year we have the Cherry Blossom Festival and there's cherry everything. And I don't like cherries. And so being here where there's bananas, come on, banana pudding. That's incredible. Banana pudding, some pretty good stuff, huh? Uh, absolutely. There's a parade. There are lots of concerts. There's a whole schedule. Um, the Facebook page has the schedule on it. Right. You can look up the Banana Festival on Facebook, or you can go to the city of Fulton, Kentucky, or Fulton Tourism online and get the full schedule. And if you have any questions or anything, you could contact the tourism department in Fulton, and Kenny Etherton would be glad to answer any questions, I'm sure. Well, and I'm really glad we got to talk to you. We're probably the very first folks who talks to you in your new job for podcasters are this we the, is true are we the first podcast i think you're my first podcast period <laughs> fantastic i'm glad we could uh break all these uh great firsts there you so go. thank you so much and i really no appreciate problem. it well thanks for stopping by come by and see us anytime you bet thanks to all you listeners who joined us today at discovery park of america and at the railroad museum in south fulton 
Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com.